So um, my name is Stephanie Hampton. Um, I work for AI Crete. And um, so a little bit of a background. So the reason that you're going to see some of this, so our company does material characterization. So we test the raw material, all the raw materials for our customers. Um, and then we have um, AI-based um, mix design optimizations as well as a quality control system. So what you can, you're going to see through here is how we've been testing some of these materials to try and assist our customers, um, one with creating the mix optimizations, but also for them to be able to see any, any potential changes in the performance of their product. Um, and then this way we can communicate that to the contractors and, and further down the line. Okay. So I know pretty much all of you, I'm sure, at this point are aware of the C595 blended um, cements. Obviously, 1L has been the big topic. Um, I'm not only going to discuss 1L today, but it is uh, obviously going to be one of the primary. Um, and then just for a little bit of an idea as far as, you know, they've been discussing the EPDs and the GWP. And so just for an idea for everyone, I have on the right-hand side um, basically rough average as far as the CO2 um, amounts for the OPC as well as type 1L, uh, slag, and fly ash. So as I mentioned, when we test for our customers, we test some of their cementitious products. This happens to be from a type 1L single source of supply. Um, on average, you will see, um, I'm sure people are pretty used to the 3.15 as the general for the OPC or the type 1-2. Um, typically, you might have between a 3.07 to a 3.09 regarding your 1Ls. Um, Unfortunately, we had a customer that was having some issues. They noticed that um, after switching to 1L, they had some changes in their admixture package as well as their water demand um, and bleed water. So they made adjustments to their mix, and then all of a sudden, um, they had some issues where it was overly wet, and they couldn't quite figure out what was going on. So when they sent us some samples, you might see at the bottom, we've got back-to-back -back dates in August, literally one day after the other, and then a few weeks later. So you're seeing that where they had like the 3.1 to the 3.07 back in September, it went up and above as far as being basically like a type, type one, type one two. So unfortunately with this, you'll see again, a lot of question has been towards Blaine. So yes, obviously when you have some fineness, you have some um, assistance there as well with particle packing as well as strength. Um, as well as filling some of those voids. Um, but you can also see here with the mint. So you can see the variation here as far as with the plane. Now, this is with one type 1L. That obviously there was an, an issue, unfortunately, with this specific producer and their plant. This obviously would be something that I would consider to be a very rare um, and not a common um, occurrence, we would hope. The problem is that which has been kind of reiterated throughout this presentation, is that unfortunately the change was not communicated. So unfortunately this went to the producer, went into their silos, and went into multiple slabs and elevated decks. Um, so we were having some issues and then turned into shrinkage and some pop outs and things of that nature. So, um, okay. So here we have kind of just an illustration of the limestone content and the LOI. Um, so Again, kind of where you saw with the specific gravity, same samples, same dates, um, just showing your variance as far as the limestone percentages. So this, this specific supplier had a target of 13% limestone percentage in their 1L, but you can see that in some, it's actually down to less than one, which is in your type 1-2. <clears throat> this is kind of, a, um, kind of a breakdown here. So we do XRD, XRF. This is an XRD, so you're seeing with the C3S um, in the orange, the C2S in the green, as well as the C3A, um, and so forth. So you've got the, the limestone percentage in the blue towards the end. Um, so these, these illustrate, or what you're going to see, is basically the difference between um, your, your early age strength as well as your late age strength. So when you're seeing these changes in trends, obviously this is something that had it been communicated, we could be able to assist the producer and then the producer could then notify the contractor. Um, so this one is for the um, hydration. 
So you can see the difference between, so um, you see the different lines with the July through September um, for here, as far as the, the difference in range that you're seeing in the performance, the actual values are a little bit below. Sorry, I know it's probably a little hard to see. Um, as well as the, the difference in set time. Um, so you can see, I think that there was a difference almost of, what is that, um, is it 100? I think as far as, so you've got about an hour and a half difference as far as that time between the two that they were seeing. So I told you this isn't a, I'm not pointing fingers, but this is actually, we're getting off the 1L, this is for a type C fly ash. So again, you know, it's not just, it's not just 1L, all materials can have variation in their, in their products and in their makeup. So this is again, as far as the heat and the curve. So you're seeing this huge dip and difference as well within your class C fly ash, um, as well as over here you've got for the base calculations. Sorry, I'm trying to read over. So imagine that you're in a situation where you're a supplier that has both this 1L as well as this type C fly ash and you're blending them together. You're not knowing that you're having these wide ranges and you're, unfortunately, you're blindly just continuing on with your mix design as it's been developed and batching those mixes. So unfortunately, we have a situation where not only is this um, individually, but as well as the two then reacting together. So unfortunately, at that portion, you can also have, unfortunately, a worst case scenario. So, unfortunately, we've had a lot of things, so you heard with Jason, with co the complaints on the contractor side, if they don't know what's coming. But unfortunately, it, the same thing can go for the ready mix supplier as well. Um, back to 1L, this one's as far as the mortar with compressive strengths and slump and air content. Um, so as far as the strengths, you can see with where there was the dip um, with those, um, as far as the variation, so you may remember, so it was the August six, the August dates that were the difference that had the kind of more of a type one two uh, performance. So, like I mentioned, we don't we're not just doing this um, just to do it. So we test these um, materials because we're doing optimizations for our customers. So this is a. Um, so in the blue is what we call the baseline. I couldn't show the design because I'm not allowed to share it um, as per the customer, but the blue is what we call the baseline, which is your original mix design. And then the green and the purple were other options. So when we get the different um, materials, the raw constituent materials, we will then input it into our AI-based technology, and then we put in your baseline mix. We actually create the mix design ourselves in the lab, um, and then we will then evaluate the performance. So this switched from the 1.2 to a 1L. This is 3,000 PSI. They had a um, maximum water cement ratio, minimum cementitious, all kinds of different regulations. Now, within 30 to 60 seconds, the AI will spit out thousands of options for that potential optimization for um, the potential of meeting those um, parameters. But unfortunately, as you can see here, I'm only showing three because they were the only three that would I could get the high early strength um, and meet the requirements of both the ready mix supplier as well as the contract for this, the specification and the job. Um, but so you can see, sorry, with the spider diagram, with the difference between the water cement ratio, the seven and 28 day strength, as well as the volume of the aggregates the cement difference and uh, even the cost savings. So this is the same exact mix design, same everything, same um, as far as the parameters, but now we're using a 1P. So um, this, I'm sorry, there's, there's several more, but the, the key too is that there are a lot more options. So with this material, we were able to have a lot more um, variance and, and ability to meet the uh, strict requirements for the project. Um, but again, you can see the, the range between the seven and 28 day strengths, the, the drastic difference as well as, as far as the amount of cement, the cost savings and water cement ratio and aggregates. So um, Calvin, I guess a few people have mentioned how 
you know, as far as concrete testing, we can't just rely on our slump air and our compressive strength. Um, we're no longer in that world anymore. Um, so when we do mix designs, we also make sure that we look at, um, you know, the workability, the consistency, the bleeding, set time, segregation, things of that nature. Unfortunately, this is, this is something that we really need to make the new norm. Um, what we do is we take videos, we'll do small placements, um, and I know that even Ben mentioned that he would partner with, as far as, you know, for large projects and things of that nature, and doing these test, you know, pours. These are things that we're going to need to do, and it's unfortunately going to be something that we're going to have to be responsible with um, across the board. Okay. Um, and, of course, the whole session was who's responsible. So. Really, it's all of us. So, um, you know, we've got it from when we're doing the lab and we're doing all the evaluations to actually creating the design and testing it in the lab to going out into the field and all communicating between raw, raw materials, raw constituent materials, all the way down to even if we're going to have something that's polished. Um, I don't, do we have any polishers in the room? Um, but that's been another really big concern too with, you know, if, if you're not, if you're having issues with the placement of your slabs, that they're having issues with polishing as well. So, um, and that's it. Any questions for me? What's that? Are we good? Okay. Yes. Yes. What caused the large variation to the Well, um, so and that was that was kind of the whole the whole point. So it was they basically didn't admittedly say it, but they basically didn't put the limestone in. They didn't add that grinding in. There literally was no limestone in it. So they they claimed that there were only delivering and shipping 1L that they no longer made 1-2, but um, did not put that into the final grinding there with gypsum. So, um, and then as far as the final outcome, unfortunately it became an issue of a lawsuit and because it was noticed and they, they weren't able to make any changes um, to the design because they didn't know the difference. They didn't know that it had changed back from one to the other um, and that big wide range from basically going from zero or one percent to 13 um, and unfortunately the slabs did not perform to the um, owner's expectations so yes you started by showing specific gravity and then LOI do you feel like specific gravity is a good enough correlation to limestone percentage um no I mean it's a good indicator but I wouldn't say no I mean and that's the other thing too I, I sorry I kind of want to also reiterate like a lot of these, some, most of these things can be on the mill cert. Some are not, unfortunately, with 1L. Like, yeah, those things aren't. Um, but no, I wouldn't say typically, but you're not even going to see that on the mill cert, I don't think, anymore, the actual specific gravity. I mean, it can be, yes, but. Um, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, throughout the whole. Sorry, go ahead. It, that seems like a simpler test than, like, Oh, yeah. Well. Well, yeah, I mean, we're doing XRD, XRF, calorimetry, but that the whole point is, so if we said that we just did it based off that, our credibility would be totally questioned, and it already is at this point, because they're like, well, what are you, what are you doing? So um, had to, you know, show our laboratory and our equipment and um, certifications and everything like that, too. So, yeah. Yes? With these more frequent changes, is this going to lead to more, more frequent characterization of the quality? The need for it or the actual having it done? I would say yes, um, quite frankly. So uh, Jason, who is the contractor, I don't know if you were in here for that, for the contractor who was presenting. Um, actually, there are a few contractors that I've been talking to that um, actually like to make sure that they know what material is going into their project. So even if a ready mix producer is not a partner of ours, um, they've been trying to see if they can work with us to get samples of the materials that are going into those projects so that they know. And it's not, not to like point fingers or any blame, it's just to know what, what to expect. It's to say, okay, this might be the change in my set time, this might be what my bleed rate might be. 
things of that nature. So it's really just a matter of to be helpful as far as the further down the line. And yes, I think so. We're at a point where we actually have material producers donating material and sending it to us because they want to be part of the whole solution, which is awesome. So, yes. Sorry, thanks for sharing this very nice data. I'm curious when you show the R3 data for that flyer from the single source, do you use the R3 inputs also in your model to predict the generate mixed designs? Yes. We use any of our any of those information and we'll put that into the AI. So I'm curious then, it's a, even from a single source, if the SCM is varying in its reactivity, you know, would you then take from a certain week, you do the R3 and make the input, but then what if in production they're taking the flyer from a different week? Oh, well, it's continuous. So when we partner with a company, they continuously send us samples. So it's at least monthly, if not biweekly, and some do it weekly. So it's constantly updated. The, the goal is to get to real-time optimization. So that is our goal. So the more that we input the data for the raw materials, the more that we can continue to, the AI learns, and we're able to then optimize mixes. The plan is to optimize as it's basically going into the, into the truck. So, yeah, you can still have to wait seven days to just do the best. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So thank you all for joining us.